Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to South Mountain YMCA Camp's online camp from home classes. My name is Becky and today we are going to be doing some nail art or, or string art. I guess it's a better word for it. Um, nail art doesn't have to anything to do with your nails, your fingernails. Uh, it actually has to do with a hammer and nails. Uh, so if you're Googling it online or anything like that, type in string art or type in hammer and nail art and then you guys will it'll show you what we're working with today. Um, so let's get started. We're going to first go over all the materials you need and the different types of materials you can use because again, this is a type of craft project that you know you can look to see what you have around your home and make it work because that's that's what camp's all about it's just trying to you know make it work with the supplies you have lying around <laughs> um so first things first you need nails because nail art you need nails so a lot of different types of nails mostly the most important thing is that they're small you don't need like big honking three inch nails we want like really really tiny nails just like that, oh, put it up there, just like that. Now, the important part of this knit of the nail is that it needs to have a head to the nail. So this little cap, you see this little cap at the top of the nail? That's really important. You do need to have one of those. You can't use the type of nails that don't have that because then the string that you're gonna wrap around it is just gonna fall right off. So for my project today, I found these really pretty gold nails they're called linoleum nails i don't know what the difference is but they're only like they're really really small they're only like five eighths of an inch and they're super easy to hammer in and everything like that and they're this pretty gold so i think they're gonna work out really well they were a dollar on clearance at walmart so if you don't have these tiny nails at home you can go to walmart you can go to home depot and they're really super inexpensive and you can just get nails so Nails, we need nails. Got it, check. Next, you need a hammer. Now, the hammer I'm gonna be using today is this little baby hammer. Um, the smaller the hammer, the better with this. Really, it depends like how big your project is, but my project is pretty tiny and the nails are pretty small and they're very, really close together. So, tiny, tiny hammer is the best. But if you don't have a tiny ha hammer at home, that's okay, you can use your big honka hammer if, you have, if that's the hammer you have available. Remember, make it work. So, you can also use a ballpoint hammer, it doesn't really matter what type of, just something that's gonna hammer those nails in, bottom of a shoe, high heel, whatever you got, you can use that. Um, but I, today, I'm gonna use this little tiny baby hammer. Um, I, I'm not really sure, it was in our arts and crafts shop, but I'm sure you can find those anywhere as well. Okay, so next, is the string okay so just like a lot of our other crafts projects it doesn't really whatever string you have at home it kind of depends on what you want to create if you have a specific color scheme in mind then you know you need to find those color strings but if you don't that's okay use what you got it can be any really type of string you can use yarn you can use embroidery thread uh, or you can use now what I'm using is this uh, natural fiber cord See how it's fuzzy? Um, I had this, that's a bad, it's, a, it's the color of my hand. Um, it's really fuzzy. It's actually stuff that I use to make friendship bracelets out of, but I had that lying around. So these are the colors. I'm probably only gonna be using these two today. <coughs> but again, you know, maybe whatever type of string you have lying around, that's kind of gonna carve what project you're going to do today. Okay, so we have our hammer, we have nails, we have string. Next, we need a piece of wood. We need something to hammer our nails into. And again, this is where you can get creative. See what you have lying around the house. If you have just a piece of plywood, just like this, like a scrap piece of plywood lying around the house, this will work. If you like that natural plywood look, use that. If you wanna paint it, awesome. You can have a really dark background or a really light background, put some sky, clouds, whatever. You know, this will work. This is sufficient enough. It's thin, <coughs> but remember, your nails are also very, very small. They won't have to go in very far. This would work. Um, you could also get these. Um, this is just something that they sell in any craft store, really, um, Walmart. It's just like a piece of old, fake, old-looking uh, board, 
and you know I think they use it for painting on and stuff like that but this is available at all craft stores and this would make a really nice uh, background for it again if you have it lying around or what I have lying around is a lot of these wood cookies because I did you know our fun tic-tac-toe boards on them so I have a lot of extras of them so this is what I'm going to be using today I'm going to be using this type of big round wood thing and going to be using that um, I also put a stain on it just so it's a little darker but that was just my preference again whatever you have so we have our hammer we have our nails we have our string we have our wood almost there that's we're almost to everything you need scissors you need tape any type of tape um, I recommend masking tape or painters tape seems to work best because that's what kind of sticks to wood scotch tape doesn't really stick to wood very well but again whatever you got um, and then you also need this might be the weird thing a mechanical pencil or anything that has a pointy end it has to be really small though like a really small point so the mechanical pencil doesn't have to have lead in it it just has to have that pointy end to it you can use a pen um, you can use the end of a paintbrush <coughs> excuse me um, but anything that's pointy that's what you need you could use a really long nail if you got like an extra long nail around but you know need something pointy okay so I think we're ready we got our hammer we have our nails we have our string we have our piece of wood we have our tape we have our scissors and finally we have our template so this is what we're going to be creating today this is a it's it's a dandelion it's the dan it's you know when dandelions are dying quote unquote dying um it's when they get all gray and you can wish on them that's what we're going to be making today um this is a really cool little pattern i typed in string art dandelion pattern and this is what showed up so really that's what you can do you can type in whatever you want to make and google it and it'll show up i did post a link um a little earlier that has simple patterns for string art so you can also use those and if you would like you can also just draw your own like that's like super cool if you are artistic like that and able to draw your own creation do that I can't or I'm just not not great at it so I'm going to use this and be creative inside this box that's how I'm gonna work it now the reason why we have this template is because this is how you're gonna see where you're going to put your nails you see those little dots right there that's just completely lining out where my nails are gonna go so let's get started and we'll keep talking about choosing the correct choosing what template you need and everything like that now once you have your template selected this is where you're going to need your scissors and you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut all this dead negative space around your template you're just going to cut around that because the thing is if i take my piece of wood and i just plop this piece of paper over it i can't see where exactly the dandelion is going to be right so i need to cut out the dandelion it does not have to be precise this doesn't have to be pretty cutting you just have to cut out all that negative space but i'm leaving a little bit of a gap there i'm not getting too close to it again this is not great cutting anyone can do that so you see just cut it around it and now all the negative space is gone so now i can see how best it's going to fit onto my piece now this piece of wood kind of stands up on one of these there you go like that so that's how i'm going to want to do it i'm going to put it just like that and once you find where it's going to fit the nicest that's when you take your tape and you're just going to tape down where you want your template to go that's the only reason why we have the tape the tape is only there to tape our template into place so there go so just a couple pieces of tape right in there and voila it's taped in there again doesn't have to be pretty this part no one's going to see but you and then you're going to now you're ready to get started now let's talk about the template a little bit this is the template that i chose i liked it because 
it has two, I can basically do two colors. I could do any cut type of colors, but I wanted to use two colors. And it actually has the nail pattern in there. Now, there's something really important about this nail pattern though. This was made for a bigger board. Probably the nail pattern was made for a board this size. So I had to shrink it down a little bit. So what that means is that where all those little nails, look at the center of it. You see how many little nail marks they have right there? I'm not gonna be able to make that many nail marks into here. I'm not gonna be able to put that many nails into this piece of wood because they'll be too close together. And if your nails are really close together, you're not gonna be able to see the string woven between them, okay? So I'm gonna probably get a little creative with this and make sure that things are a little farther spaced apart. So I might not follow this diagram exactly. So you don't have to get a diagram that has the nails indicated on it. You can always get just, you know, a nice outline of something and then make your own nail marks in it. Remember, you want, there's a straight line between them. So if you want to make a curve, you have to make sure that they're close enough together to make that curve. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So we have this set. That's good. And now we're going to get our hammer and get our nails. So quick tutorial on how to use a hammer. You get more power, this is such a dinky hammer. <laughs> you get more power out of the hammer the farther you hold it down on the handle. Leverage, physics, that's how it works. You have a little bit more control though if you're holding it up here, but it's gonna take a lot more taps to get in. Now, I did say and use the word tap. That's what we're doing today. We're not like going ham on these nails. We don't need to do that. The nail only has to go in halfway. That's it. You want to have a good portion of it sticking up so it doesn't move. You have to get in just halfway. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to do. So when you get started on this, make sure you are starting from the middle and work your way out. The reason is if you start from the outside of your pattern, it's going to be really awkward to hammer inside the row of nails that you have on the outside. So start with all of your detail work inside and then work your way out that way it's going to be a little bit easier so i'm going to get started i did test this a little bit so i think we're going to be fine with me hammering and talking at the same time but we'll see let me know if you're watching if it's like that's really annoying don't do that anymore so i'm going to hold this i'm going to make sure i'm hitting that nail right on the nail head and i'm just going to tap it in that's all i'm going to do once i'm i've i'm holding it with my index finger and my thumb and once I have a couple of taps in it's gonna stay there but that's not far enough in so now I can make sure I hit it a little bit stronger so it goes in halfway just like that see it ta-da that's right smack dab in the middle of my project that wasn't too bad so you want to make sure that they're straight up and down if they get crooked that's okay you can do a little bit of a tap 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 on the side and that'll help straighten up your nails and everything. So you do wanna make sure they're nice, straight up and down so that when you look at it straight on, you're not seeing the sides of nails because when you look at it straight on, all you should see is the top of the nail and then the string that you're gonna be weaving through it, okay? So you're gonna keep going around like this. You're gonna keep going with it. You're gonna put your nail. Now I'm using my thumb as a bit of a measure. If I can fit my thumb between the nails, now just the tip of my thumb, now I don't have a really huge thumb, but just like the tip of my thumb, if I can fit them between the nails, then I know that I'm gonna have a good bit of string showing, that the string is gonna show a little bit. So that's a good indicator. You don't want the nails right next to each other because again, then you're just gonna have golden nails and that's going to be the pattern or that's going to be what people just see is this the top of the nails if you want to go for that that that's fine but this is actually called string art not nail art so we do want to see some of the string that's going to be between them. so you see what i mean they have a little bit and i'm not following the pattern exactly again because the pattern's a little bit too small to scale so i'm just going to make my own little circle and we'll make it work so when you're doing this, you have to, while you're doing this, you can be thinking about what type of colors I'm gonna use and how the string is gonna weave between them. Um, you can get as creative and abstract as you want with this. If you Google a couple of them, people actually use the string to color in with, so they just zigzag 
all over it. Because I've chosen a specific pattern, I want it to look a little bit more even, and flowers are usually pretty symmetrical, so I want it to look, you know, pretty even around the whole thing. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to show you real quick. If you do mess up, that's okay, because you can just pull the nail out. If you've never pulled a nail out, that's what this, the back of the hammer is for. That little thing, you're just gonna slide, you're just gonna slide that hammer, back of it right onto the nail, and you can just pull it right out just like that. It's okay if you mess up. And it's okay if you hammer in at the wrong spot. You can just lift it up and put it in the spot you, you need. Yes, it's gonna leave a hole, but that's okay because once you start weaving your string, that hole is gonna be covered up by your string most likely. And no one's gonna notice. Again, this is crafting. It's okay if it, it's not gonna be perfect. Okay, so let's fast forward. So once you have this whole thing done, you can take off the paper, okay? Once you have all of your nails in, you can take off the paper. You might be tempted to leave the paper on because you want to, because it's hard for you to visualize what everything looks like, but take the paper off before you do your strings. Because if you don't, it's going to be really difficult to get that paper off once your strings are all woven in there. So, flash forward, zoom, zoom, zoom. I've hammered a lot. Ha ha, I'm done. Isn't it magic? So, here is our pattern. So here's the stem part, part of it. Here's it going away. So remember, this is what our pattern kind of started like, just like that. And this is what it looks like done there. So you see, I did take a little bit of liberty. I didn't put as many nails in the middle and I spaced out the nails on the side a little bit more, okay? So we're gonna start with the stem. I'm gonna see if I can move you guys a little bit closer and point you down a little bit. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna start with the stem. So the stem, I'm gonna go traditional and make the stem green. Put this back a little bit. Now, the hardest part about this whole process is actually tying the string to the nails and then tying them off when you're done with the pattern. It's the hardest part. And so that's saying something. It's a pretty easy project except for that part. What I do is I actually start my knot not around the string. That was a little confusing. I start my knot in the air just like that. So that's my little knot that I'm gonna put on there. I'm doing a little bit of a variation on a bowling knot. You don't have to do that. If you don't know how to do a bowling knot, that's okay, but you could watch our knot videos and you'll learn. But that way I know if I pull it nice and tight, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just a little bit of a slip knot, that's all it is. So just tie your own little slip knot. Again, whatever knot you know, it will work. You're gonna cut your string, your end a little short. We'll come back to that in a second. You can just leave your ends out and we'll talk about what we do at the end. And then there you go. So I'm started. Now, this is where you kind of have to have the pattern in your head. You need to know, whoops, you guys disappeared on me. So this is where you have to have the pattern in your head a little bit. You need to know kind of where you're gonna go with that pattern. Because I decided to start from this end, so that means I'm gonna probably end back here. I'm gonna end at the same spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna wrap it around, and this is where you can kind of take your liberties, do what you want. I'm gonna come back down, wrap, I'm gonna go up to the same one, just because I want my stem to be nice and thin and almost opaque. And then I'm gonna come right back down to the same one. Pretty simple. I'm gonna back you guys back up. Do, 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 do. So, now you're gonna to have to tie it off again. Take your scissors, cut that nice and short, and tie it off. This is where it's gonna get a little tricky because you have to keep the tension in your string. If you don't keep the tension, it's gonna get loose and all that string is gonna pop off your nails. So you have to keep tension pulling. So keep on pulling on that string, wrap it around, and then wrap it around that same nail again. So do a double wrap around that nail to help you maintain the tension the whole time. And then you're just gonna do your quick overhand, quick tie off knot over the same string, 
pull it nice and tight and you can leave the tail for now we'll come back to it so you see pretty simple that's the easy part it's the stem it's a straight line so I made it pretty easy for myself now you might be like Becky why do we need the pencil you asked you asked us to bring a mechanical pencil what is it for it is for this part right here see how close all of these little nails are you're going to need the tip of this pencil to guide your string around those nails making sure you guys don't follow me again there you go so you're going to need that tip of the pencil to guide your string around those nails a little bit so let me see if i can show you guys a little bit how this is going to work so i've decided that i'm going to make um i'm going to go a little bit creative and i'm going to make my petals quote unquote petals or the little fluffy things the seeds that come off dandelions pink because i like pink um and i also don't have gray so <laughs> that's what we're going to do so again i'm going to start my knot in the air because again it's a little bit easier to start that knot in the air again i'm just it's just a little it's a slip knot that's all i'm doing i'm kind of tying a knot around i'm tying a knot around the string and i'm going to put the nail in here and tighten it tighten it right up perfect just cut off that i'm going to cut off the end a little bit just so it doesn't confuse me there we go now i'm going to stand up so you guys can see this so as i'm doing this you're going to see that i'm going to be wrapping so I'm gonna go down first. I'm gonna be wrapping this around. But once this gets a little bit finicky, you might need to grab your pencil and use that to guide your string around those nails. And again, that's only when you have these really, really small nails. See that? And then you can just guide it around. And you're just gonna keep on going. I'm gonna keep on going just like that. So this is where you're kind of using your pattern, okay? And you're kind of seeing what you want it to look like and you're just floating around those strings. Now, what I have learned, a little bit of troubleshooting while, while we're looking at this. I'll move you guys a little bit closer so you can see how it's going. So what I've learned as I'm troubleshooting with this is that these nails, sometimes your nails are going to pop out if you haven't gotten them in all the way. Okay. And you see how there's these big gaps between these and they're not quite even. That's when you're gonna learn if your nails are correct or not. Sorry about that, guys. I just fell off my tripod. There you go. That's how you're gonna learn if your nails have fallen off um, or not, if your nails are in the straight line. But again, it's okay if they're not. You guys can always just pull them out and replace them. You can see that you can't really see through it once you start going. So you're gonna keep weaving it through using your pointy bit if you need to keep wrapping it around and going through it wrapping it around and going through now i'm going to make this whole thing pink but i'm not going but it's not going to be one continuous piece of string you don't have to just use a continuous piece of string feel free to cut it off a little bit and then start somewhere else because again there's this big gap right here. I'll show you guys in the pattern, it's easier to see. This big gap here in the pattern, you don't wanna have any string there. So you can tie it off here and then start again and come back around. So you can use as many colors as you want. It's really, again, you can get creative with it. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit. So once things start to get going, you're zooming through, using your pencil if you need to if not sometimes you have small enough fingers it's just there to give you a little bit extra don't be afraid 
to go over a couple nails a couple of times. You can wrap around the same nail multiple times. Use your pencil to push down the string that's on your nail so you can wrap around it again, okay? There's a point to it. But remember, if you're doing multiple colors, whatever color you do last is gonna be the color that ends up on the top, okay? So that's why I did my stem first. I did my stem first because I'm probably gonna go over it a little bit with the pink and I wanted my pink flower to be on top and my stem to be underneath it, okay? So, as we're going here, fast forward. So, this is the finished product of what it's gonna look like for, well, what mine looks like. Yours might look completely different. You might do a different pattern or you might be more artistic than I am. So, once you fast forward, this is kind of what it looks like at the end of it. So I decided to do a pretty simple pattern going up, down, up, down, up, down to make that first. And then I used a second piece of string to zigzag along the top. You can kind of see that I zigzagged along the top there. And then I decided to do the same type of pattern coming up so it made it look like it's the exact same stuff that's floating up there. Now. I cut off the ends a little bit to make them a little bit shorter, but you can still see where some of my ends are. See, there's my little green end. There's a little pink end down here, that type of thing. What you're gonna do at the end to make it look nice and neat and to ensure that those ends are gonna stay where you are, you're gonna take a little bit of glue, whatever glue you have around your house. Um, I recommend Elmer's glue because it's easiest to work with, but if you can't, if you don't have that, super glue is okay, but you just gotta be a little bit careful with it. Um, you can use hot glue, but the issue with hot glue is that it leaves like a noticeable residue. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your glue and Elmer's glue, you can use like a little tiny paintbrush and you're just gonna paint that end down onto the nail, uh, onto the nail. And that way it's gonna stick there. It's not going to untie itself and you also won't be able to see it because Elmer's glue um, dries, you know, clear. So that's how you're gonna finish off your whole thing. Now, my whole thing looks a little fuzzy because I use this natural fiber, but if you use different types of string, you're gonna get like a crisper line with it. So, for example, doo -doo 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 -doo. this is the last thing I'll show you guys today. This right here is nail art. It looks really, really awesome. Um, so it's a deer, it's a stag actually, and all of these lines right here are actually really, really thin gold thread, okay? This was actually made by my grandfather. It was given to my dad as a Christmas present in 1981. Nail art used to be a, a very big thing. Um, <laughs> and we're bringing it back. So this can be what you can aspire to. Um, you can see how he used uh, different patterns to create shadows and everything. I mean, obviously it didn't really run in the family, but I mean, I think this is a really good example of something to like, this is how art happens and this is crafting. So, you know, you can see this, you can get inspired by this to do whatever you want to do. Um, he used really, really, really tiny, tiny, tiny nails and just really, really, really thin thread. And, you know, you can do that. that. That's what you can do. So these are the two extremes. Simple craft. This probably, you know, this only takes about 30 minutes when you're all said and done, probably. Um, depends how much, how much time you got. Um, and then this probably took days. <laughs> so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. Let me know. Um, check out, again, use Google. Um, you can Google all sorts of patterns there um, and all sorts of ideas. You don't have to make things that are like this. You can also do stuff that just uses the negative space. So meaning you can have a shape of an object and then just zigzag string all around it. So you can just see like the outline of an object. That's a really cool thing as well. So thanks again, guys. Uh, make sure you check out all of our other online classes on our website, on our Camp From Home page at www.smymca.org. This is how we keep, keep the fires burning. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.